If you get me talking about Libby Gill, we're going to be here all day. critical, especially now that we, we begin to develop leaders at all levels of the organization so that we can all innovate, take risks, bring bold ideas to the table. After what, uh, what Daily Variety would call a brief stint as an actress, I decided it was time to go behind the camera, behind the scenes and work on the corporate side of entertainment, which turned out to be a much better fit for me and where my leadership skills, my ability to, to command a room, to lead with vision, to articulate a mission to others, to combine the strategy with the execution, which to me is the art of leadership. Those were skills that found a much better place in that world. So that's what I want to talk about today. Some of the skills that you were hearing before about the strategy, the way that you can create a culture of leadership, because honestly, it's no longer with the kind of things your industry and, and the country, in fact, the world has gone through. It's not enough anymore to just bring out the leadership in yourself. If you are not creating leaders at all levels of your organization, you're just not fulfilling the obligation of the role. It's not what's in the job description, it's what's not in the description that defines you as a leader. So here's what we're gonna talk about today. We're gonna talk about some strategies so that you can create that culture of bold leadership around you. First, by developing your own leadership DNA, who you are, sort of the, the who of leadership. Secondly, by a process, the how of leadership. And this is a process that I teach, I've taught across the country in clarifying, simplifying, and executing a bold vision for success, however you, however you define that success. And then finally, pursuing a radical sense of purpose, of having a real definition for what matters to you, to your constituents, to your customers, your clients, your consumers, but also within your community, your organization, even your own family. So those are the areas I wanna to touch on today. And first, there's an old saying, you may have heard this before, if you're a leader, if you're leading and no one's following, maybe you're just taking a walk. <laughs> so what you don't want to be is one of those leaders who looks around and discovers there's nobody back there. I started my career as a tap dancing bear, and then I was a talking Christmas tree. I was the hand of fancy feast cat food for a couple of years. I was a soap opera actress, and then I decided it was time to get a real job. I started temping through all the different studios in Hollywood. I ended up working as a PR assistant in what was then Norman Lear's company, and in five years, I had become a vice president overseeing publicity, advertising, and promotion for five divisions of Sony's worldwide television group. Leaders need to really be very clear about what the objectives for the team and what the mission is for the organization. And once you do that and you really clarify, simplify the path and execute against measurable milestones, then you're able to hold everybody accountable to their specific piece of that vision. I want to talk a little bit about, about our own preferences and our own style because we sometimes become slave to our own thoughts and we forget the rest of the world has their preferences too. Let me show you what I mean. Clasp your hands like this right now. Just cross your hands. Now, look down, see if your left thumb is on top or your right thumb, okay? Raise your hand if you're a right thumb on top person. Raise your hand high, okay? Now raise your thumb if you, raise your thumb. <laughs> raise your hand if you're a left thumb on top. We split about 50-50. It, it really doesn't have anything to do with, with hand dominance. Okay, now I want you to switch it. 
switch it and put that other thumb on top. Does that feel weird? It's really hard to do. Okay, now try this. Cross your arms. Now some people tuck the hand, some people have it on top. Okay, now leave your arm crossed. Look over at your neighbor, see if they're like you, if they're different from you. Okay. Now, all right, enough. Okay, here's my point. Now what I want you to do, I want you to do, leave your arms crossed. I cross mine now with my left arm on top because I just got engaged, yes, at age 55. Thank you. And I'm so tickled that, you know, I've just got to put my arm on top. Um, anyway, so leave your arms crossed, but nod your head. If you are a right hand on top, nod your head. Okay, now those of you who are left hand on top, nod your head. Okay, now here's what's really interesting. Those of you with the left arm on top, congratulations, because you have the gene for leadership ability. You have a very strong connection. Those of you with the right arm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, there are many other things you can't know. I made that up, of course. Okay. You scientists, I can't outsmart you. All right, these are preferences. These are preferences that we choose early in life, and, and they just don't waver too much. But my point is, you're all great leaders, definitely. My point is that our preferences are so strong. We become so wedded to them, it's difficult to change. And the interesting thing is, everybody else's preferences are just that strong, and they're just as resistant to change. They don't want to switch it around either. And to be a leader, you've got to recognize that you've got a room full of people with different strengths, weaknesses, preferences, that you've got to meld together into that gumbo. Libby Gill is one of those people who gets it. can share the credit and the success with your team, that's what sets those great leaders apart.